Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the 2024 fifth generation of the Lexus RX. This is the 350h. It's also available with a turbocharged petrol engine known as the 500h, which is obviously more powerful. But this being the lower powered one is actually quite attractively priced, if I may say so, but I don't think it is. But anyways, this is the key of the vehicle, the regular Lexus key with some weird thing behind this. Straight away, let's open the engine bay of this vehicle because obviously you get orange cabling for the battery management system. I mean, it's somewhere there. That is the engine and I firmly believe that a V8 can easily fit in there. At least a six-cylinder can. There's insulation there. It obviously gets gas struts and the design looks absolutely phenomenal. What a beautiful looking car. Yeah, it looks amazing. The lights are really nice. However, they're not all LEDs because the indicator is halogen. This is the DRL. That is a projector. Meanwhile, the fog light is right below. This is sort of functional because there's a very small vent. It gets four parking sensors at the front. There's the front parking camera. The Lexus logo does not have the blue tinge in spite of the fact that this is a hybrid. So they made some changes with the NX. Meanwhile, the spindle grille actually merges with the body. So it's a very neatly done design. I really like it. I think it's phenomenal. Anyways, coming to the side of the car, you realize that it is decently big because the length is almost 4.9 meters. The wheelbase is 2.85 meters. So yes, it's long, but doesn't seem so because it doesn't really have the presence because it's more crossover than SUV. Floating roof treatment has been done. Lots of cuts and creases here and there. And the tire size is 21 inch. So the tire size is exactly 235, 50, 21. Alloy wheel design is fantastic. I really like it. There's a camera here and it doesn't really project anything from there. If you notice, the door handles look quite cool in fact they project the project projector lights so you know exactly where the door handle is at night when you try to open the car obviously and it gets this sort of a chrome treatment around the windows too this is not functional at all you get a shark fin antenna as well i love the way this whole treatment has been done looks phenomenal doesn't get rear wheel steering which is there in the 500h and at the rear the design is very clean yeah it's super duper clean firstly it says rx 350h awd this is fake i don't know why meanwhile the exhaust is placed right below here so that is the exhaust and uh, yeah there is no exhaust there you can see the underbody in fact i think this is a towing hook so when i'm standing behind the car now it's making this sound because it knows that I have the key. So with the key in my hand, it will automatically pop open the boot, which it should be doing by now. Yeah, there it is. So it has the hands-free boot function. The boot is, I think, 461 liters. You obviously get a parcel shelf, which has to be activated like this. How to activate it properly? Yeah, this is a bit flimsy. There it is. Let's shut this. Below here, you get a spare wheel, which is not full size. It's not even an alloy. 165, 90, 18. Toolkit is there. Jack is there. Rose is not there. Meanwhile, the battery is placed right there. I think so, because it tells me some notice in languages I don't understand only. So I'll skip that. I'm not supposed to open that. Speaker placement here, there's a hook. And if I press this button, it will recline the seat. There it is, the seat recline. However, it doesn't come back up. Meanwhile, let me shut this. There's a button here okay i so rather lever here i pull it that is 40 20 40 split boot is actually big enough i press this and there it shuts some weird warning lexus gives lots of warning there's a camera placed right there and it obviously has rear fog lights on both the sides that is the indicator lights are super duper awesome i think this is for an aero function meanwhile the lights look beautiful connected tail lights but a car which is this expensive does not get rear wipers just kidding it obviously gets it because very range rover inspired the wiper is hidden right below the rear spoiler something which land rover has been doing since a lot of time and now lexus is like we shall copy it too and again some aero function here this does not open unless and until you press a button on the inside that's kind of weird the door handles are a little different yeah, have to press it inside and they open very slick in operation and obviously you can increase the boot carrying capacity by reclining the seat if you notice one thing now that seat is completely reclined this seat is upright so yes there's a recline angle but for that you have to adjust it using this lever which is not the best passive shelf needs to fall down obviously it gets isofix child seat mounts and door pockets also huge you can unlock and lock the car from the rear as well says mark levinson quality is absolutely phenomenal but i needed sun blinds here space inside is also very good there's good amount of legroom and knee room under thigh support is decent it's not bad it's not great and then headroom seems decent but sloping roof line now affects it height adjustable seat belts obviously scooped out seat back not really it gets magazine holders ac vents placed here it gets seat ventilation for both the rear seats, not for the middle seat, and two USB-C charging sockets, and you can control the air conditioning from here as well. Meanwhile, this is almost flat, which means three people are very comfortable here, and the center passenger gets a head, proper headrest. There are twin cup holders here. There's some storage space here as well. Again, very practical a cabin, handle, hook, 
light placement, all that has been given. The dashboard looks really very nice. Amazing design, amazing quality. I absolutely love it. So good place to be, the rear seat obviously. And this is the e-light system. Pressing this, you open the door, I'll show it to you. Check that. Isn't that super cool? So Lexus does do some innovations here and there. And here is the light, the puddle light, obviously. This is for the child lock function, which is not hidden. So you can very much see it. Let's shut this. Doors have this softness to it when you open and close them. So yeah, overall quality and all will definitely impress you. In fact, the wipers have this spray on top, which move along. So the spray is spread throughout. There's a camera there for lane keep assist. Obviously, it has got ADAS functions as well. So what do you really think about the design of this car? I think because of the design alone, people will buy this car because it looks absolutely smashing. What a beauty. What a design. Lovely looking car. I absolutely love it. And obviously, request sensors on all the doors. So just put your hand and automatically unlocks. This is 10-way power adjust, says SRS airbag right there. Let me press one. And there, if you notice, the seat is going behind. Hopefully, the steering will also move. Yeah, the steering is also moving. So it has got memory function for the steering and the seat is really very nice and comfortable. So it's 10-way adjust, 4-way adjust for the lumbar. Door pockets huge at the front, controls for the power windows as well as the outside rear view mirror adjustment. But I've taken a lot of buttons and stuffed them here. This is to open the fuel lid. This is actually to open the boot. This is for the memory settings. Usually, it's on the door now, but Lexus has placed them right here. So you can save up to three people's settings. And this is to increase the brightness of the cluster. This is a TFT cluster, by the way. And this is to browse through the odometer and the twin trip meters. Meanwhile, it also tells you in how many kilometers you need to service the car. What is this Nano EX? It's basically a technology invented by Panasonic, wherein the air conditioning system, actually the Nano EX, puts out water molecules or something of that sort in order to get in fresh air. It's a bit confusing, but you get the drift. It's just helpful. You should definitely have it. So AC is connected from here so that it can also defog the outside rear view mirror. And let me show you one very cool bit about this car, which is that it's so simple and unique and nice. Nah? I mean, you've never seen something like this before. This is beautifully lined. It doesn't seem to have the cooling function, but it's decent sized as well. Meanwhile, you can open this from both the sides and there's some amount of storage here, but no USB charging sockets. Twin cup holders, there's this push button so you can actually adjust the height of the cup holder. Yeah, you can do that as well if you so wish. Only for the front one that is. There's some wood treatment here. I think there's a wireless charging pad. Two USB-C charging sockets, AC vents, hazard lights. This is for the camera system. And there's some storage space here as well, along with the USB-C and a USB-A charging socket. So you have plenty of charging options in this car. Electric parking brake, EV mode, this is for the auto hold, this is for traction control. And this is for the trail mode, which basically tweaks the all-wheel drive system as well as the engine and the braking and a lot of other things. To ensure the car is very comfortable when you take it on a trail, Galibar is nice. You have to actually push it like this to select drive or to get into reverse. So that's kind of cool and different. Let's get into reverse straight away. This is the reverse parking camera. It obviously gets adaptive guidelines. It gets a 360 degree view as well. And when you come near an obstacle, it automatically detects the camera and turns it on as well. I press it into parking and there we are out of this. This is to turn on the vehicle. That is another speaker. This car has got 21 speakers from Mark and Levinson. Amazing audio quality. Yeah, Mark Levinson audio system is just phenomenal. In fact, let's try and listen to an audio right away, which means it's a bit confusing for me right now. So I have to press this button and yeah, we are in radio. So let me increase the volume. Radio City 91. Audio quality is actually phenomenal and I love the way the AC controls have been done. So when I turn on the air conditioning, inside this you can see is the temperature so I can increase and decrease the temperature. It has got a three zone climate control air conditioning system. Let's turn off the air conditioning. This is for the volume. So volume is a physical control, thankfully. This is for the defogger. This is for the front fog. This is actually for the rear fog. And yeah, easy controls to use. However, it gets Apple CarPlay, which is wireless, but Android Auto is actually wired, which is kind of weird. Let's get into the phone settings and the various other settings. There are a lot of settings to browse through this. So we get into the car settings and there are the various drive modes. In fact, driving assist has so many things. So yes, it is fully loaded. Meanwhile, you get trip information. This is actually very easy. So this is the energy flow. Maybe we'll turn this on when driving the car. All-wheel drive system, I can see how the power is being put. Tire pressure monitor, someone has punctured my rear, right? And uh, that's not all. The best thing is I can get into customize. I can customize the lights. Okay, lot of easy things to do here. There are 14 themes right here. Yeah, there are 14 themes. Meanwhile, I can get into custom and there are 50 colors which I can change for the ambient lighting, which actually comes across from here, which is very premium and nice as well. 
and then I can change the heads up display. I can change a lot of things. So it's kind of easy to use this system. I definitely like the system because I think it is easy in that regard. Let's get into the climate menu and then it has got Lexus climate concierge wherein it can decide to put the airflow directly to the occupants. That's kind of cool and nice as well. Yeah, it's actually an easy system to use relatively once you get used to it. Otherwise, it's not very easy to be honest. This is for seat ventilation. Yeah, there are three settings for the same and there's an auto setting as well. And seat ventilation is also there for the co-passenger. So it's there for everyone almost. The horn. Horn is very meek. Steering is super duper awesome. It feels nice to hold. You get paddle shifters, obviously. Automatic wipers, automatic headlights. Yes, it is not the same way how we are used to with Toyota. Wherein on the right, we have the light control. On the left, we have the wiper control. It is Ulta here because obviously Lexus is targeted more towards the US market. These are the controls for the audio system and these for cruise control and lane keep assist and all that. And you can make a lot of changes from here. So when I press any of these buttons right here, it actually shows it to me in the heads up display. Yeah, isn't that a very cool thing? That it's telling me what exact button I'm pressing and I can change so many things. Same is the case if I turn on the left ones as well. So I don't have to put my self out from the forward visibility through the windscreen. I can simply make changes here and see it on the heads up display because the quality of the heads up display is absolutely phenomenal. So this is very useful and it's very touch controlled sort of a feel, but it works really nicely. Now that is a TFT screen. It shows you a lot of information. Obviously it is telling me the temperature, the fuel meter, and then it's also telling me the EV driving ratio. It's 79%. It also has the, like it's telling me how much engine power and battery power I'm using. Now this is a fantastic system. It's the same as what you've seen in other Lexus models. And as soon as I change the drive mode now, it actually makes changes to the cluster as well. So there I can change it. And there's a custom mode too. So drive modes are multiple, obviously. Now, whenever you turn on the car now, this screen actually does a Lexus startup. Even this screen, it delays a lot. It takes some time, but it does this full nice Lexus startup as well. This is auto dimming, obviously. There is a mirror here and beautiful lining. There's a light here as well. Microphone right there. Same is the case here as well. Meanwhile, let's actually open the sun blind. Now, this has a massive panoramic sunroof, which brings in a lot of airy feeling inside the cabin. I'm just going to do one thing. I'm going to open the sunroof. It's... It takes its time, honestly, because it is quite big. And there opens the sunroof. So yeah, they have given it a nice and big sunroof. Thankfully, it's not a moonroof. And yeah, that's about it. It doesn't really open much. So I'm a bit disappointed there. It could have opened a lot more. But then once this is opened, it brings in so much light inside this sort of a blackish cabin. Now you obviously have multiple color options as well. And you can choose whatever you feel like. Dashboard is like really very big. And it has a lot of piano black finishing here and there. This is definitely a fingerprint magnet. It attracts fingerprints like that. Very quick with attracting fingerprints, but the quality of the screen. Now, this is actually a 14-inch screen. It looks huge. It is huge. It is one of the biggest. BMWs is bigger at 14.9-inch. Mercedes is also doing bigger ones, the ones which are vertical, obviously. But this is very nicely done. I like the design. I like the quality. I like the attention detail. Everything in this car feels good. Only thing is my left knee is hitting here. Now, this is electric adjust for the steering wheel adjustment obviously so you can adjust it in multiple ways and the overall cabin gives you a lot of premium feel to it but how is it to drive well let's start driving right away all right let's turn on the car and there it doesn't roar at all because it turns on EV mode. This screen is super slow. Come on, turn on, turn on. It says oil maintenance required. So it gives you all those warnings. Now this screen is getting activated. Heads up display is one of the coolest I've ever seen. Yes, I agree to everything. Just let me start going ahead with the car. Okay, we're going to get out of this map view. I'm going to get into the driving assist. These are the drive modes. I don't know why Apple CarPlay has turned on, but we'll get out of Apple CarPlay because, okay, now it gets a little confusing because I'm wondering where do I want to go? So sometimes it's not the easiest. Where do I go? Where do I go? Do I press this button? How do I come out of the system? I don't want CarPlay. Oh, this is the problem here that it gets super confusing at times. So the system could be slightly slicker. Kida jana hai, bhai, bata meko kida jana hai. Two very boring minutes later. Finally, I had to disable Apple CarPlay. Otherwise, it simply wouldn't show me what I want. But I have to change the drive modes. There should have been a button to change the drive modes, which again means I have to go to this menu. This is the shortcut one. Here we get into sport mode. I'm going to turn off traction control. Traction control turned off. If I keep it pressed, will it change anything? Not really. 
okay vsc also turned off pre collision braking system unavailable let's just shut this by keeping this button pressed and yeah we are good to go i get into drive mode there's a sport mode yeah we are in sport mode left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator engine has turned on it says accelerator and brake pedal press simultaneously it's also showing it on the heads up display 2200 rpm and off we go flat out performance is very disappointing yeah the engine doesn't feel that exciting when you give it the full beans now when you turn on the car it moves the seat ahead it has this welcome mode there you can also program if you want the doors to unlock when you get into park all those things are there ground clearance is obviously decent it keeps telling me traction control is off i know it dude you don't have to keep reminding me so what powers this car it's a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated twin cam 16 valve engine which is super smooth and refined obviously but because it's paired to a CVT gearbox it obviously has the rubber band effect so it keeps whining all the time especially on hard throttle it's best driven on part throttle because when you drive it on part throttle it feels by far the best it feels the smoothest there and it definitely feels very nice to drive especially when you are not trying to extract the most out of the motor because then i think the electric motor is able to assist you better this engine produces 191 horsepower and 242 newton meters of torque it should be detecting animals i'm not sure why it's not doing it but then but it's not all about the internal combustion engine because just 191 horsepower and 242 newton meters is nothing it is the electric motor which gives this car some real punch because the front electric motor gives it 270 newton meters of torque and instantaneously resulting in immediate acceleration turbo lag extremely well contained i'm going to turn on the traction control because this guy is going to bore me by showing me the message repeatedly the traction control system is off yes dude i know i can see that big fat warning light which comes of the traction control being turned off anyways the front electric motor makes 180 horsepower and 270 newton meters of torque the rear electric motor is a bit chintu bintu because it produces just 54 horsepower and 121 newton meters of torque the overall result is this car goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.9 seconds which is slow it has a top speed of 200 kilometers per hour the rx 500h which has the turbocharged petrol engine 2.4 liter has more power more torque faster in terms of acceleration i think goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.3 seconds and has a 10 kilometer per hour higher top speed oh my god that's a lot 200 and 10 kilometers per hour is the top speed of that car but then it's not all about the top speed because past a certain speed now this car starts to struggle a lot it has a new battery system yeah because of which it discharges fast but it charges fast also which is really very good in fact it doesn't have a lithium ion battery it has a nickel metal hydride battery toyota continues to use that for i think cost effective reasons or whatever this car has got 216 cells for the battery which is good Overall system output 250 horsepower which is good enough and this car weighs 2025 kg so more than 2 tons is the weight of the car it doesn't feel heavy as such it doesn't feel light either but just feels right somehow it has a 65 liter fuel tank which means that it has a very impressive driving range i don't know where some air is coming from it has a very impressive driving range let me check the view button which does not work when the car is moving actually so that actually sums up that uh, the whole hybrid system in this car works phenomenally well it is absolutely amazing this whole hybrid system in fact 100% of the power and torque can be channeled to the front wheels alone with zero going to the rear in case it needs it otherwise uh, wrong button <laughs> otherwise it can channel up to 80% power to the rear axle and just 20% to the front axle which means that it is obviously more front biased but if the need arises it can channel all the power and torque to the rear wheels as well here yeah, you see the whining effect from the gearbox yeah i just don't like how the cvt works but the ride is actually quite good very impressive a ride it actually does waft along at certain speeds only thing at lower speeds na it kind of uh, not lower speeds specifically speaking when you're driving this car over uh, really bad roads and all it thuds through it thumps through so it's not very smooth and refined there but for the most part you would love the performance and the smoothness of this car it's unbelievably smooth we're going to come to a quick halt here because i want to show you the camera system which i didn't show you the 360 degree parking camera that is the one which becomes transparent chal ghum le bhai ghum le oh look at that color of the car isn't that super awesome okay i think i need to get into park and then i and i press this view button then it will circle automatically automatically unlock all doors with shift position in parking and then it turned on the engine as well this will circle as much as it feels like by the way active noise cancellation is there in the 500h which basically plays reverse frequency sounds i mean you know what it is right it was there in the endeavor i've explained it multiple times so this is one of the crazy ghumne wala function another one is there as well and the car color is not really the color of my car 
it's a bit different but yes it looks quite cool is it not the same car also i, I don't think it's the same car because i don't think it has an aggressive spoiler it looks like a lotus elytra to me right now so there is where they have actually tried to trick me now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get into this function and i am going to change something so in the mode thing let me oh god why does it always keep intervening me and this can get a bit tricky because you want to do something and it ends up doing something else only completely so uh I'm going to change the mode here. I'm going to come into the G-force meter right there. I'm going to turn this off as well, and we are going to come out of this menu. And I'm going to try something which I think is not going to work. EV mode, EV mode unavailable. What the fluff is this? So we get into sport mode, and left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor. Look at the way everything is going everywhere, and off we go. you can hear the nose dive under heavy braking so performance is very very impressive on part throttle on heavy throttle performance isn't as impressive because of the whining from the gearbox otherwise yeah you would never ever complain about the performance of this car because it is smooth it is very smooth it is extremely refined a car and then there's so much grip on offer as well handling is surprisingly good body roll is well contained the steering also offers good amount of feel and feedback so yeah it's a good steering it's a good handling car and the ride is also good so they've got the balance of almost everything which is the most impressive part about this car and that's something which will definitely put a smile on your face that it's a smooth car which feels extremely comfortable and the mileage is something which will definitely blow your mind because this car will easily return more than 20 kilometers per liter because the electric motor is so good here that half the time you're driving on electric power yes it even tells you how much electric power you have been using so that's something which is absolutely phenomenal here the way the electric motor is able to boost the fuel efficiency of this car making it the most efficient petrol car you can buy yeah this is the most efficient petrol car right now one of the most because there are more efficient ones as well however when it comes to big cars when it comes to luxury cars this is quite efficient there's no two ways about it look at the way it corners so beautifully well corners very flat amazing i love the performance i love the handling i love everything about this lexus other than the fact that lexus is sales and service network is a bit chintu mintu but then they also can do away with a lot of sales and service network considering they have very low maintenance cars so yes you don't have to worry about maintenance of the car that's a good thing plus spares and all that will be much cheaper when compared to the german alternatives so that again is a benefit of buying a lexus japanese and reliability go hand in hand for sure so you would surely appreciate a few things about this car the only thing is that at 1.14 crores on road mumbai this is bang in gle territory as well as okay look at the way it's cornering tires are making some sound obviously so it is bang in the bmw x5 territory and the bmw x5 is just fantastic so i can't deny the fact that the x5 is phenomenal and also has a lot of presence and massive rear tires which really blow your mind it's running on like crazy big fat rubber so that's something which i definitely like a lot and the x5 would personally be my pick where is the ada system why is it not working so it has got forward collision warning automatic emergency braking blind spot monitor or alert it has also got reverse cross traffic alert it has got a slew of ada systems and the ada system has been tuned beautifully well for indian conditions that's the reason it does not intervene even if you drive zigzag which you should not the ada system will simply not intervene and disturb you which is something i really like Like the ADA system on this car is very, very, very well calibrated. Big thumbs up to Lexus for that. Very nicely done. Anyways, horn is so me. Yeah, come on, we need a horn which scares everyone silly. And the problem with this car is it doesn't look intimidating. Doesn't sound intimidating. The electric motor is okay, has the whine, but the smoothness of this engine is something which will not really please you because if you want an exciting exhaust note, this is not the car. This will simply not give you an exciting sound when you give it the beans. In fact, let's do the braking test. And three, two, one. Ah, uh, yeah. Brakes are not that show footed. I mean, they're show footed, but then obviously my phone flew right there, and the other problem happens to be that uh, there is significant nose dive. Now it has got adaptive dampers. The dampers are on the stiffer setting right now, and still the ride quality is actually good. So the damping is good. It doesn't have air suspension, but adaptive dampers means that when you get into comfort mode, now it is quite comfortable in the way it drives. So look at the way it corners. Okay, it is so show footed. You can point and shoot an SUV of this size and all this. absolutely 
unbelievable right it has also got safe exit system so if you're exiting the car it will tell you not to exit and all so a lot of features here and there obviously lexus has added it so let's get into the drive mode there is eco there's custom there's sport and we are just going to come into the eco mode which changes stuff here it becomes blue right there performance dulls a bit then let's get into custom you can make changes here normal mode is whatever it is and sport mode gets you the tachometer you can also go into the settings and actually turn on the tachometer if you so wish it has got lane keep assist and it shows you in the heads up display as well so guys this is my vlog of the lexus rx 350h fantastic car but probably you might be better off spending around 27 lakhs more and getting the RX 500h with a turbocharged petrol engine which definitely has better performance slightly more features like obviously it has got active uh, noise cancellation how do i forget such things because i forgot in the endeavor which was one of the few cars which had that system back in the day this car also has rear wheel steering not the 350h that is limited to the 500h and the 500h also has more way adjustment for the driver seat so this is 10 way i think that is 12 way so slightly more features to justify the price of that car if you like this vlog make sure to give it a thumbs up that's the like button and also subscribe to the channel i will keep going around this circle endlessly till lexus does not decide to locally manufacture its cars in india i know i know toyota can do it for them but then they are like okay vlog khatam bye